Hey guys, this video is going to show how to tank as a phantom rogue. Let's go ahead and take a look at what talents I thought would be best. Since we were level 15, we had 6 talent points to work with. Now of course while tanking you want to take as little damage as possible, but early on, keeping aggro is the key here. I put 3 points into lightning reflexes for a 3% dodge chance, 2 points into improved sinister strike to reduce the cost by 5, and 1 point into precision to gain 1% hit. At this level you pretty much miss everything. For gearing, I have nothing special, just some greens, current level leatherworking patterns, and for now, just using the best and slowest main hand weapon I could find for some heavier sinister strikes. But as we gain levels, I have plans to try daggers for this phantom rogue build. Now let's go ahead and jump right in here. For single target fights, you could use stealth at this level and use garot. But gaining the most initial aggro is best. The target may be dead before garot even pays off. Now a running theme for this phantom row could be aggro issues. For groups of two, if they are humanoid, you could pull with a sap, but it costs 65 energy, so you would be unable to use a sinister strike directly afterwards. I found it best to just hit the main target with one or two sinister strikes, and then switching to the other mob. Keep in mind, once you build combo points on one target and move to another, if you put new combo points on the new target, the previous points will be lost. Keeping it to one Sinister Strike and then using Slice and Dice before switching mobs might end up being more efficient. Now using Sap here on this group of three Trogs I would say is a good bet. Using a Sinister Strike on the primary target to get the initial aggro before popping over to the other target. Had to also pick up the Trog Shaman ad we had. And at this point, especially having high aggro causing DPS, it's not a bad idea to give up on the primary target and start focusing more on other mobs. Bombs from engineering. Can't go wrong. Now, if you get into a bad situation with adds, you always have evasion for that 50% dodge chance on top of your 25 or so personal avoidance at this level. Now, I didn't have to use it in this instance, but also keep in mind that you could use sprint to get away from mobs while keeping aggro on them. You should be thinking about how best to use your rogue's crowd controlling skills to be a better tank and limit damage taken. Now for the hunger. Simple tank and spank. Just use evasion once you get him in a good spot and you will have him down like nothing. The last notable pull in Ragefire are the groups of three orcs, one being a warlock with a voidwalker. Not a bad idea to sap one and get aggro on the melee enemies to utilize your avoidance. While the group takes out the caster, it can be beneficial to break your sap early to get some aggro going on that target before it has a chance to wake up and run off to the healer. You will notice you have a disadvantage keeping aggro on many targets at this level. You should try and be as efficient with your energy as possible. As you continue to have more talent points and abilities, your potential to hold aggro will increase. Lastly, we take on Basilon the Seder.
big thanks to my friend Justin and Saratin who have been helping run these instances for footage. Hey guys, if anyone's interested, go ahead and look in the description below to see about joining us in Classic WoW to run some instances. And thanks for watching.